Mobile WiMAX 2.0 is marked by its radio interface design like LTE A because uh, after all in the next generation networks most of the research has gone into defining advanced modulation techniques um, and uh, antenna design etc so mobile WiMAX 2.0 wireless interface or the radio interface has some similarities and then certain differences with LTE A let's explore these the ITUT IMAT requirements as specified in the NGN architecture for mobile WiMAX 2.0 are quite similar to the requirements put up for LTE A and that is why we see that the spectrum allocation here is again quite similar like LTE A here the spectrum allocation can start from 1.4 megahertz up to 5 megahertz in a single chunk within a band then up to five different bands occupying a total of 20 megahertz for a single carrier now while these similarities make some kind of interoperability viable and uh, possible there are some differences also for instance the downlink for LTE A and mobile WiMAX 2.0 are not much different both of these are based on uh, um, OFDMA orthogonal frequency division multiple access when it comes to uplink in LTE A it is single carrier frequency division multiple access which is uh, quite advanced and it is highly suited for mobile phones because it does not need uh, high transmission power uh, saves uh, the overall battery uh, drainage on the mobile phone when it comes to uh, WiMAX 2.0 the uplink is actually based again on OFTMA um, so it means in terms of uh, symmetry we can say WiMAX 2.0 is more symmetric because the uplink and the downlink are the same um, when it comes to LTE A the downlink is OFTMA based but the uplink is SCFTMA in addition the the way radio resources are organized in LTE A uh, through the radio resource control module RRC radio link control module RLC the design of the resource blocks or the components of uh, mobile WiMAX 2.0 are different so that makes uh, certain other changes like the overall frame structure of WiMAX 2.0 is very different uh, from uh, uh, LTE A and uh, when it comes to radio resource management that is uh, um, when certain frequencies are to be allocated and uh, then um, in interference mitigation requirements certain steps have to be taken so again uh, both LTE A and mobile WiMAX 2.0 differ in summary we can compare both of these that is 802.16 m as mobile WiMAX 2.0 physical layer and the data link layer and LTE advanced uh, we can compare them starting from the data rate the peak data rates in downlink and uplink both for low mobility and high mobility scenarios then we have the spectrum that can be allocated to both of these um, the latency for uh, for the control uh, path and for the bearer path uh, it is um, it is it is more or less the same uh, we are expecting uh, uh, some changes here obviously because these two technologies are essentially different uh, then we have the MIMO techniques uh, you can see that we have uh, downlink is 8 into 8 it, it actually means simultaneously 8 frequencies can be allocated for transmitting and 8 frequencies for receiving and on the uplink side that is 
on the mobile side it can be 4x4 in LTE A it is again 8x8 and 4x8 the spectral efficiency is here 15 30 you, you can just have a look uh, mobility support is interesting both of these can support uh, links at speeds as high as 350 kilometers an hour uh, think about uh, using uh, these technologies while you're traveling in uh, in, in a bullet train um, so your connectivity would still be valid normally on like motorways we do not exceed 120 kilometers so we are likely to have a pleasant experience for browsing when we use both these technologies so then we have the access schemes and then we have the uh, cell edge spectral efficiency this specifically relates to the uh, uh, bits per second uh, per hertz which can be achieved at the intersection or the border of adjacent cells 